Welcome, good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Praise Life. This is the time where we offer our praises to the Lord for all the good things that He has done. Let us express our gratitude and our joy in serving the Lord. Let us sing for our first song for the beauty of the earth. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over from our skies. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for joining us in Praise Life. Welcome once again to Hopeside Community Church. First time visitors are especially welcome. We have a guest book right by the side and please contact us. Please provide us your contact information so that we can reach out to you and serve you to the best of our abilities. Please keep up uh, keep up to date with all of our programs and keep this in mind all the programs is to benefit mankind and upgrade uplift health reforms this week we are so glad to have pastor jeffrey paul and keep him in your prayers as he's going to break the bread of life pretty soon the fourth week of any month is focused on outreach matters here's a quote to reflect on this theme we are all missionaries wherever we go we either bring people nearer to Christ or we repel them from Christ. Are you again? We are all missionaries. Wherever we go, we either bring people nearer to Christ or we repel them from Christ. By Eric Liddell. This is a very powerful quote. So whether we are missionaries, whether we like it or not, so, I'll leave this thought to you. Prophecy Live is every Saturday at 3 p.m. And you can participate in all of Hope's site service by Zoom or browse, watch youtube.com slash myhopesite. Women's Bible Study is every Saturday at 4 p.m. and it's led by Dr. Sonia Selvin. We have prayer fasting every Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and of course, after the divine service, all of you are welcome to a luncheon. And happy Father's Day. This year is fall on June 18, 18 2023. Oh, it's finished. <laughs> yeah, but then, belated Father's wishes. Have belated Father's Day wishes. So, hope you had a good time with your fathers and your loved ones. With that said, are there any other announcements to make? If yes, uh, okay. uh, there will be a combined uh, or joint worship with Calvary Adventist Church on uh, July 22nd. Okay. So reserve that time and uh, once I'll go there, they invited us to worship. So July 22nd is the joint worship with Calvary Once again, on July 27th, we're going 22nd. to have... 22nd. 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 Okay. On July 22nd, Hope Side Community Church is going to have a combined worship with Calvary Seventh-day Adventist Church. So please remember this date and yeah. join us. Yeah. At their location. At their location. So for our opening song, let us all sing Water Fellowship. Let us all stand for the opening song.
This is the time for intercessory prayer. Prayer is the key to heaven. And angels watch all of us and wonder why we don't really connect to God when God is ready to hear us, ready to hear our prayer. The only thing is we don't really have the faith Jesus says, even if you have as little faith as a mustard seed, God is there to answer our prayers. Let's have faith as we pray. And uh, is there any prayer request? I'm thankful to God. Every week I talk about my children and God works it out in a miraculous way. I'm thankful to God for Sarah who finished her residency and uh, especially for all of you praying for her. And my humble request is for Sarah Shiva. She like to find the Adventist person to settle down. And for my house and my eye, that's it. Amen. And last week I was in the Michigan uh, conference committee. They stressed so much about personal evangelism. And so here am I to appeal to all of us that wherever we are, whatever we are, and whomever we contact in our day-to-day -day life, let's talk about Jesus to them so we can hasten God's coming sooner. Amen. 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 And also, let's keep this in our prayer that the state of Maryland should receive bountiful rain. Because recently, like I just heard from one of the fest facility, from the faculty department, saying that you know because of the water shortage, it's very hard for it's very hard to supply water for to each and every house. We are so grateful that the Lord is providing us water during this time. But let's keep this in our prayer so that others can also receive their needs. For oh my. I want to thank God for bringing me back once again safely, safe and sound, uh, to the U.S. We are happy to have you back. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to remind us to pray for the state of Manipur where the Christians have been persecuted. And uh, just yesterday, one of my family sent a text message to earnestly praying for them, what they're going through, we don't understand, but we know that the state is really suffering because of the faith. So that God give them, the people who are over there, give them strength and endurance to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And with their faith, we understand and we will, it encourages our faith. Yes. Silent, of course. Yes, Charles. Happy Sabbath, and I just want to give God thanks and praise for allowing us to be here today. And most of all, we uh, we have our three grandchildren that with us today, worshiping here with us today. Uh, I want to thank God for that, for bringing them, bringing them down here safely. And I even want to thank God for allowing their parents to return back to New York safely last night. It was a rough ride, but they get back safely home. What are the children, the sons' children's name? Oh, the grandchildren is Amara, Seraya, and Juju. They are all in the back here. We'll meet them after service. Any other praise reports or prayer requests? Yeah, let's continue to pray for a church project, building project. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen. He can open any door, shut any door, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yes, definitely. God, we all believe, as I was telling before, we should have faith as small as a mustard seed, and we, we will have a place of worship very soon. And I'm sure all of you are praying for this and keeping this project in mind. And we believe that God will answer our prayers and we are going to really have a place of worship very soon so that many more can join us and worship together.
And also, I'm yeah. glad that uh, Elder Johnson, Johnson Christian is here. He's my very own relative. So he had uh, health issues, but we're glad that he's able to drive and come to our Amen. church gathering. Amen. Amen. So continue to pray for his protection and his health, so that God is always... Every 93 in October. Oh, okay. Okay. So we need to have our grand celebration. God has been with you for 93 years. Blessing from God. And we are always happy to have you, Uncle Johnson, here. Thank you. So let's all uh, kneel down for prayer as much as possible. I will keep standing. Okay. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Oh dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the manifold blessings that you have been giving us during the past days. Oh Lord, as you have said, count our blessings. Because all the blessings that we enjoy are only from you. Oh Lord, help us to count and thank you for the blessings that you have given us. Many times we forget to thank you for the things that we have and we take things for granted, oh Lord. And help us to name them and count them. Thank you for the food, shelter, protection and care, for the good job, for the education, for the fellowship, for the families that we have. Thank you, Lord. Although we do not deserve all the things that you have given us many times, oh Lord, you have blessed us more than we deserve. Help us, oh Father, to be thankful. At this time, we thank you for bringing Pastor Johnson, Christian, here with us, oh Lord. We thank you that you have been with him during the past 93 years. Thank you for giving him good health so that he could drive and come here and worship with us, oh Father. Amen. We ask you, Father, to continuously be with him and his family. Give him peace, joy, and health so that he will share your gospel to many people and he'll be a witness for people around him. We pray for Amudaka. We thank you for being with her during the past days. We ask you, Father, to bless her and be with her eyes so that she will not have any problems with it. We, we ask you, Lord, that she will be able to find a house so that she will buy and be settled. We pray for her daughters, O oh Father, for Sarah, Shiva, and Sheila. We ask you, Lord, that you will help them find a good Adventist husbands so that they will glorify your name. Their families will worship you and glorify you. We pray for Mariaka as she is having silent request. You know her heart, O oh Lord. You know what she needs even before she asks you. O oh Lord, and we know that you're going to answer all her prayers. We, we pray for her brother as well. As he's not keeping well, we ask you that he will continue coming to our church and worship you together. We pray for the church project Oh Lord, we believe that you will give us a place of worship and you will bring many people where we can praise you and adore you, oh Lord. We pray for the community center as well. May your will be done. Help us to have faith that will be strong so that our wishes and prayers will not waver. Help us to have the strong Assurance that you will answer our prayers, oh Father. We thank you in advance, oh Father, for giving us a place of worship and a community center so that we can serve people around us. We also pray for uh, the personal evangelism. Help us all to go out and preach the gospel because the time is very near. <coughs> oh Father, we pray for uh, Maryland, as Justin was telling. Oh Lord, we need rain and bless us, bless our place. We pray for rain in India, we pray for rain and all over the world so that things will flourish. We pray for Nalini, thank you Father for bringing her here back to worship with us together. Oh Father, we also pray for all the Christians that are suffering in Manipur. Yes, we 
ask your Lord that you will be with them, the government and the people around them. Uh, we ask you that you will talk to them and you will hear their prayers, O Lord, as they are suffering. We ask you, Lord, to hear their cries and answer their prayers. There are many Christians who have lost their houses. Their houses have been burned. They have been persecuted, O oh Lord. We ask you that you will hear their prayers so that there will be peace. We know that we are in the last days, O oh Lord. And this is happening in the cities. And, and during the last days, people there in Manipur are going, fleeing to the villages. O oh Father, help that to be a sign for us so that we will also understand that we will one day have to flee and help us to be ready to leave everything in this earth and prepare ourselves for the heavenly kingdom oh Lord. many times we are too involved in the earthly things that we reject the heavenly messages and signs from above we ask you O oh father so that we will see signs and be more prepared to go with you. We also pray for Bernadette and Charles. We thank you a lot that they have brought their grandchildren, Amen. Amora, Sharia and Juju. We ask you a lot to be with them, bless them abundantly. May they grow up as a witness. May they be blessed. Help them to have good education. Help them to grow spiritually so that they'll be an example to people around them. Thank you, Father, for bringing their family back to New York safely. We pray for all the other projects and other wishes. Oh, Father, we ask you that you will bless all of us and answer all our unspoken requests. At this time, we ask you, Lord, that you will help us to keep the Sabbath day holy. We commit the preacher into your hand. Be with Pastor Jeffrey Paul and may your Holy Spirit guide him, lead him so that our souls will be touched by his spiritual message which will come from above. Be with us and guide us at last when the come in the clouds. May we all go with you, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To continue our worship, uh, we come before the Lord with our offerings. We pray that God will give us and guide us to, uh, to hasten His coming with our offerings. God does not need our money. God is rich enough to provide each and every, every one of us in this world with enough things. enough things. So, let's not think that God is requiring our money. God is asking us to give, a, give it to Him liberally from our heart so that we will receive the blessings and will hasten His coming. So, let's pray for the offering. Gracious Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you for the manifold blessings that you have given us. Thank you for the food, clothing, shelter, the rain, the air we breathe, the food we eat, Lord, and for the health that we are enjoying at this present moment. Mighty Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for everything you have given us. And once again, we come into your presence, just as we are, and we place our time offering our, our whatever offering that we have brought before thee. Father, I pray that you will bless this offering and use it for the furtherance of your cause. These blessings we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.
This is the time for the children's story. So I request all the kids to come forward. Or you can just sit there. They can come and sit there. They can come and sit there. They can sit there from the chair yeah. on the yeah. sofa. There. Okay. You can, cause, you can ask the kids to come forward and have a seat over here. And. Our journey through Genesis continues. This journey started with lesson 146, and today's story is lesson 170. Now, just in case you may have missed some stories, I invite you to go back and listen to some of the stories that you may have missed. They are all numbered, so they are easy to find. Today's story is taken from Genesis chapter 37, and it's called Joseph the Slave. And I would invite you as always to go back and read Genesis 37 so you can get the whole story. The reference text is taken from Genesis 37, 14. His father said, go and see if your brothers and the sheep are all right, then come back and tell me. So Joseph's father sent him from the valley of Hebron. Now, have you ever been so angry with anyone that you did some things? Did you say to yourself, look at that picture, and I am so angry at you. Now, when you were angry, what did you do? How did you act? When you think about it, did you regret doing anything? Today, we will see how anger drove Joseph's brother into doing wrong things. Now on to the story. Last week, we spoke about Joseph and his special court. We also spoke about Joseph telling on his brothers he had one dream which got his brothers upset and then he had a second dream which made them even more upset but jacob thought about what he said even though he was a little upset he thought about what he said and he wondered what joseph dreams meant now sometime after joseph was sent by jacob his brothers were out there taking care of the sheep and Jacob wondered what was happening. So he sent Joseph. He said, you know what? Go and find your brothers and come back and tell me how they are doing and how the sheep is doing. So he went. So along the way, Joseph saw someone and they said to him, well, yes, your brothers were here, but they are now in Dothan go across that direction and you should find them and he was there and his brothers saw him and they just were angry with joseph and one of them said here comes the dreamer let us kill him so we can take the end of those dreams but reuben did not want that to happen so he said to him no 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 let's put him in this pit why should we kill the lad? 
let's put him in the pit. And in his mind, he figured that he would rescue Joseph after. So when Joseph came, I could imagine them teasing him, saying things like, oh, did you dream about this, huh? And they threw him in the pit. Now, while they were eating, and Joseph was still in the pit, Judah thought about it. He said, hmm, why should we kill the lad and not gain from it, you know? Let's not kill him. Let's do something different. Our blood, his blood should not be on our hands. And he said this when he saw some traitors. And he decided, hey, let's get him out of that pit. Reuben was not there at the time. Let's get him out of the pit and sell him as a slave. So they took him out of the pit. They gave him to the Ishmaelites. And they sold him as a slave. When Reuben came, he was also heartbroken. He said, oh no, the land is not there. What shall we do? And they decided that they would take his boat and they would put it in the blood of a boat. So they came back and they asked Jacob, uh, is this, this the coat of your son? And Jacob looked at the coat and he said, yes. This is Jacob's, this is Joseph's coat. And he just tore his clothes. He was so heartbroken. He refused to be consoled. He said, I will die. The rest of, I will die. And I will spend the rest of my days mourning Jacob, mourning Joseph. Now, question is, Joseph is now in Egypt. Jacob is heartbroken. Is that the end of Joseph's dream? Stay tuned next week and we'll see what happened with Joseph. Now let's think it through. There may be people who want to end your dreams. So you have to be very careful of who you shared with. And you want to pray that God will direct you as you go through the dreams he has for you. Now, we should not let anger dictate our actions. Because the brothers who were angry with Joseph, they did things that they should not have done. We also need to stand up for those who are picked on. Reuben did it in a way, but he probably should have stood up and said no. Uh, we are angry, but it is wrong. We cannot do this to Joseph. So we need to stand up. And one lie usually follows another. They got rid of Joseph, so they had to make up another lie. They said, you know what? We can't tell our brothers that. We can't tell our father that we sold him, so we have to make something up. And they made up that they found the coat, and they made the father think that something bad happened with him through an animal destroying him or something so one lie usually follows another so let us think things true as we go all right if i were to say the story in rhyme it would go something like this when joseph rode to his brothers one day he never thought things would have ended that way there was supposed to be one big family but they took him and sold him into slavery. And to cover up what they had done, they told Jacob they found the blood on the coat of his son. These actions were wrong. They were spiritually blind. But this is what happens when anger and jealousy controls the mind. Okay, are you ready? What is the answer? Question number one. Why did Joseph go in search of his brothers? A, he wanted to spy on them. B, he wanted to help them. C, he had a dream to share with them. Or is it D, Jacob asked him to go? What is the answer? And the answer is D, Jacob asked him to go. Question number two, why did Reuben 
tell the brothers to put Joseph in the pit? A. He wanted to rescue Joseph. B. He wanted Joseph to starve. C. He wanted Joseph to beg for help. Or is it D. He wanted to get even with Joseph? What is the answer? The answer is A. He wanted to rescue Joseph. Question number three. Who said, what will we gain if we kill our brother and hide his debt? Let's sell him to these Ishmaelites. Was it A, Asher? Was it B, Judah? Was it C, Levi? Or was it D, Simeon? What is the answer? The answer is B, Judah. And finally, question number four. How did Jacob's son convince him that Joseph was dead? A, they said they saw an animal attack him. B, they said that Joseph was missing. C, they showed him his coat with blood. Or is it D, they said they found him? What is the answer? And yes, the answer is C. They showed him his coat with blood. Thank you for taking the quiz. Okay, it's now prayer time, so let us close our eyes and let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in our times of trouble, help us to still trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for watching Uncle C's Bible Lessons. My email address is UncleCBibleLessons at gmail.com. That is if you want to contact me, but please receive your parents' permission before writing. Well, this is it for now. But as you go through the week, I want to remind you that Jesus loves you very much. Bye for now. Good afternoon, Shabbat Shalom. Today's scripture reading is found in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Um, during the time of Israelites, when the scribes came up to read the scripture, everyone stood and bowed their heads and they stood in awe in reverence to God. So week after week, I always say, please stand for the scripture reading. As I went through some of the camp meetings, I saw as soon as they said scripture reading, people stood. So let's uh, practice it, maybe from next week onwards. Please stand for the scripture reading. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew, knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. May the God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is so beautiful to see each one to be a part of Hopeside Community Church today and uh, we praise God for Sister Nalini who could be able to come and preach safely. Thank you, Pastor. All the way from my place, Bangalore. Mm -hmm. uh, very happy that uh, Dr. Johnson Christian is with us. Uh, I will call him as a centurion. You know why? Biblical centurion is entirely different from the century what we see in this hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, uh, because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 90, Verse 9 and 10. Man's life is 70, right? Three score. Ah, if it increases, three score and ten, uh, three score and ten it comes to 80 years. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Johnson has completed the biblical century that is 80 years. And every year that God has given him after 80 is a bonus point. And praise God for his uh, uh, commitment towards. Uh, uh, the truth of the church and especially coming all the way driving in this age uh, in the church so may God bless him with many more years to come and uh, may he be a blessing to each one of us here and wherever he goes uh, and blessing to his family members too that's our prayer and the topic that uh, I could choose is uh, religious but lost very happy brother Charles is there with us and his lovely family with his three grandchildren. Wow! Awesome! And uh, they were so enthusiastic when they were uh, listening to the story there. And may God bless them as they grow spiritually. The topic that I've chosen is religious but lost. A person named Howard Carter uh, searched for the tomb of King Thutmose in 1920s and he found a lot of coffins he goes to a place called sarcophagus he opened one of the coffin where king Thutmose was being laid to rest in it he found another coffin a coffin with another coffin you know, that was being laid with gold leafing on it. When he opened the third coffin, he saw a solid gold completely covered on the top. When he opened the gold topping, he found another gold clothing which was covered on the body. Under the gold cloth, there was another gold mask. But uh, when the mask was removed and the cloth was removed, which was completely decked with gold, underneath it was an old, dry, withered dead body outside display was completely covered with gold but underneath was something old dry withered and dead when i was able to go through the story one thing just clicked into my mind is that is our life externally being so much glittering in every angle or it is just like that underneath withered and dead. How is our spiritual reality of life? A person may impress the world around to be a very religious and put on a big production when it comes to their spiritual life it might be like this withered, dead, and old and dry. Where does our spiritual life lies in this 21st century as we all look for the second coming of Jesus Christ? You know, man is a very religious creature, most of them. 
You know, the world is filled with religion. How many religions do we have? Muslims, right? Hindus, Buddhist, Shintoists, Confucius, Mormons, Jehovah Witness. Okay, you can name uh, Catholicism, Tribal Christianity, Protestants, Adventists, whom all you want to call it as. We do have many denominations and many Christian uh, uh, founding faiths uh, on this earth. You know, Christianity is a predominant religion, uh, basically the place where we are living in the United States. And many people are born here and begin practicing their religion uh, in Christian circles, but never ever had a closer connection and a relationship with Jesus. Did you know that? People might be Christians, but not have a close relationship with Jesus Christ. People have the name called John, but still contrary to the life of John the Baptist that lived there. People might have a name called Daniel, but their life might be entirely contrary to Daniel in the book. There might be a person named Joseph. There might be a person named Jacob. There might be a person named Mary. There might be a person named Shadrach or Meshach or Abednego. Their name might be able to represent the biblical truth, but in their life might be entirely a different phenomena altogether. This morning, I want to ask each one of us a very solemn and a very common question. How many of us do have a relationship with Jesus? Or do you have Christ in your life? Or could I say, is Christ been able to indwell in our lives personally? Or can I be able to go further and say, are we practicing the religion of Jesus Christ? Or let me go a little bit further and say, has people been able to watch you in your workplace? Has people been able to see you walk through the lane that you have been able to pass through? Where did they be able to see Jesus Christ in your life? Did you have a very intimate and an intimate relationship with the Savior who got this religion called Christianity? You know, it was a surprise morning at the Eastwood Baptist Church on a Sunday school superintendent walked the aisles to make a decision. Who is walking on the aisle? The superintendent of the church in the Eastwood Baptist Church on a Sunday walks to the aisle to make a decision. A big surprise was that it was a salvation decision. There's another person called Dennis Brown came forward to say that I have been a very religious person all of my life, but I realized lately that I never had a very good relationship with Jesus Christ. Then he had grown up in a church, learned to say the right things, do the right things, pray the right prayer, stand and sit at the right time, but I never met his Savior, never had his sins placed on the cross until he came forward and acknowledged in front of the church crowd. He learned all the role of Christianity, but missed the point of enjoying the beautiful relationship with Jesus. It wasn't long before that a young man with a new baby walked the aisle of the church. His name was Chad Ford. Came to give his life to Jesus Christ. You know, Chad flatly stated, I have been playing a big game in the church. Chad played it very well. Well enough to be the interim youth pastor. Who was Chad? An interim youth pastor. You know, he comes, Chad with a great guy, but his sins, which seemed to be very few, were still on his account uh, until he received Jesus Christ as his personal savior. He acknowledged openly, I was a youth pastor, but still I never had a good relationship with Jesus Christ. Imagine the shock 
Years ago, at First Baptist Norman, when a pastor called Halik came forward during his own invitation, Pastor Halik, he invited people to accept to be accepting Jesus to be a personal savior, but he himself came down and gave his life to Jesus Christ. For some of us, these three events which just I mentioned, that seems like the craziest things you have ever heard. A superintendent, a young pastor, and a pastor himself who served the community had never had the relationship with Jesus Christ and they acknowledged openly and they came forward and said, I never had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ even though I was working for Christ. These are history. Is my life and your life is quite similar being in the church, being religious, but yet lost. You know, for some of us, those three events seem like the craziest things you have ever heard. These very religious and moral individuals who are faithful, serving in the church, and even they were tight players, and even they were harnessed to the core to do the Lord's work to the best of their ability. They were perfect church members, and yet they did not know who this beautiful Jesus Christ was all about. We're talking about the judgment, right? Three angels' message. We're talking about judgment, right? You know, there are three types of judgments. Never forget this one. Number one, the Lord is going to judge you according to the truth given. We all agree with that? We all agree with that? Yes. You know, the Lord is going to judge you and me is number one according to the truth given. Number two, the Lord is going to judge you and me according to our deeds. You believe that? Yes. yes. Number three, the Lord is going to judge you and me according to the gospel we preached and been able to give it to each one of us. These three are entirely different dimensions how God is to look into. The Lord who looks you and me for the depositor of truth in these last days, the way how he's going to judge me in this regard is entirely different for the person where the truth might not be shown very much but according to the deeds where he could be able to manifest himself. And the person who's been able to be judged by the deeds might not be judged according to the gospel given because we do have a different religion, we have different people, they have different walks of life, and consciousness is entirely different for individual. The amount of life which was given to you and me, God is going to hold us responsible in each one of us. You know, behind what Paul wrote, is the theme that we also have to look at this morning and that is the theme of hypocrisy. Outside you are something and inside you might be absolutely a different person. You know, one day the mask will be completely been removed and be revealed. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you may appear to those around you in a many different ways, but on the day it will be evident that the true person you are will be relieved when the Lord comes the second time. And that's what we read that in the book of Matthew. The scriptural meditation was so much, you know, very, it gives you a sense where God is going to be a just God and every mask that you've been worn today will be completely been revealed on the day of judgment. One of the person that I could be able to remember is Nicodemus. You know, the devil would love to send you to hell from a church view as much from a gutter. You know, 
prefer it in fact is not as you might think against religion for him for the devil religion is just like an inoculation that keeps many people from the real thing which means the devil might be able to attack us in the church itself to abstain from experiencing Christ in our lives Nicodemus was one of the person you know, Nicodemus would probably be welcome at any church today. He seems an ideal member, right? He was a very principled guy. Yes. He was a very knowledgeable person. Yes. Was he a very courteous guy? Yes, he was a very courteous guy. And as the Pharisee, he followed strict Jewish rules, right? Yes, absolutely. Which certainly made him a very religious person. However, Nicodemus had a serious drawback. What was the drawback? He was blind to the truth and spiritually lost. You might be a principled person, you might be a knowledgeable person, you might be a courteous person, you might be an ideal member, but just like Nicodemus, you and I might have what? been blinded spiritually and been lost spiritually. In other words, most probably he never had a close relationship with Jesus Christ. When Nicodemus came to see the Lord in John chapter 3, Jesus explained to him that no amount of goodness could erase or change a person's nature, right? Instead, everyone who decides to serve God must be what? Born? Again. Okay, what does the born again mean? I'm not worried about your strict rules. I'm not worried about your courteousness. I'm not worried about your principled life. I'm not worried about your knowledge. I'm not worried about your ideal membership in any of the churches. I'm very much concerned. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and he was telling, I'm very much concerned about you is you can never change your nature by doing all this stuff. The only thing that I want you to do is to what? What? Born? Okay. okay. If you and I have to be spiritually alive in this 21st century, if you and I are ready for the judgment before the Lord could come the second time, if you and I are absolutely ready uh, for the second coming of Jesus Christ, I want you to ask this question, are we born again which means do we really have that very intimate relationship with Jesus Christ instead of appearing to be a religious man Nicodemus would be a true believer you and I might be a true believer not having Christ in our lives no one gets into heaven because of good works and kind behavior at the end of our earthly life, when we stand before God, only our relationship with Jesus Christ matters. Amen. That's the only thing matters. Nothing else. The person whom you know matters more than the things that you have done on this earth. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord has been able to touch a heart, mind, and soul through the Spirit today on this 24th of June that you and I are in need of a deeper and a very, very committed relationship with Jesus Christ in order to be born again. Only our relationship will matter. We will want to show him that in a place of our old sinful nature, we now have the living spirit we received when Jesus Christ came into our life. The change has to take place. Nicodemus had to be changed completely. 
And Nicodemus would have changed that only if he would have been invited Jesus Christ. He came with the right frame of mind. He had the right principle. He had knowledge. He was doing the right thing. But he forgot to invite Jesus to be a personal savior. When Jesus told him that Nicodemus, you have to be born again. You see the reaction of Nicodemus. He simply questioned God in every angle as though he was more knowledgeable than God. A Pharisee named Nicodemus. Should I be able to go into my mother's womb and be born again? A knowledgeable person who was a strict follower of the law never understood simple words of Jesus to be born again. Do we, as the church members from 30 years, 40 years, we are born as Adventists and Christians, uh, do we really understand uh, the real meaning of what it is to be born again. Or we making fun of God's word just like uh, Nicodemus made fun of Jesus Christ. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher came from God. For no one can do this miracles that you do unless God is with you. He acknowledged Jesus to be a part of the Trinity. John chapter 3 verse 1 to 2. The account of Nicodemus conversion refutes those who say I have always been saved. It refutes. When people say that once I accept Jesus to be a personal savior, whatever I want to do, I will be saved. No, that doesn't happen. Nicodemus was lost spiritually. Unable to live to that expectation of the question where Jesus was asking for Nicodemus to become. He was religious, but still lost. lost. He followed the principle, but yet lost. He had all the knowledge of Christ, but yet he was lost. He followed the strict Jewish rules and regulations following the scriptures to the strict of their ability but yet Nicodemus was lost he was lost in spite of his sincere religious faith you know the characteristics of a faith of a Pharisee was a strong faith in one true and the living God they believe that an unwavering obedience to the law of the Old Testament. They believed and they practiced it. And if they had seen anyone who has not been able to follow these principles, they pointed out and said to them, you are going to hell. They were uncompromising morals. They never comprom compromised with the morals and the standards. Their firm belief in the resurrection of the body. And all this the Pharisees believed. In spite of the belief system, Nicodemus was yet lost. He was lost in spite of his high religious office. Nicodemus was a member of a Sanhedrin, which was the supreme council, the tribunal of the Jews headed by the high priest. The Sanhedrin had jurisdiction over all religious, civil, and criminal matters pertaining to the Jewish citizenship such a high position he was lost in spite of his high religious office he was lost in spite of his spiritual awareness Nicodemus was aware of the spiritual condition we know that you are a teacher from God, he said, for no one can do these miracles that you do unless God is with him. He mentioned that in John chapter 3. He was lost. Nicodemus was lost in spite of his spiritual awareness. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, he left his meeting with Jesus without being born again. He was so disappointed when Jesus asked him this question. Or he refuted and answered him that you must born again. And Jesus second time he says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. These are the only two words that 
Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, nothing else. He never oriented him with biblical principles, no. He never oriented Nicodemus with moral principles, no. He never been able to touch the biblical principles to Nicodemus. He only said only two words, two times he said this, be born again. Until, unless you have been born again, it simply says that until, unless you believe in me and invite me to be a part of your life and your system's life, you will be religious and be lost. And Nicodemus was so disappointed, he left the place in every angle. You know, another person, just like Nicodemus, came to Jesus in the night. What must I do to? Have eternal life. He was fasting, he prayed, he attended church, he gave the tithe and offering. He was a religious person. But when Jesus said, Leave everything and follow me, and it was difficult, he went out sad and disappointed. Might be religious, but lost. You know, Jesus taught Nicodemus of the need of being born again. John chapter 3 verse 3, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see what? The kingdom of God. Jesus taught Nicodemus the way to be born again. Remember in John chapter 3 verse 14 and 16? The beautiful analogy Jesus gives. You know, in the wilderness time, when the children of Israel was led by Moses, they all were bitten by snakes. You remember that one? What happened after that? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the Bible says it absolutely very clearly in John chapter 3, verse 14 and 16, that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man what? Be lifted up, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. This message was passed on to Jesus, where Jesus was alive to this greatest teacher and an intellectual knowledgeable persona who kept the strict laws. A religious person had to come and bow down to this carpenter's son. The so called as my savior, Jesus Christ. While Jesus was alive, Nicodemus was never born again. When Jesus was alive, Nicodemus never made up his mind to understand who this Jesus was. When Jesus was alive, Nicodemus failed to accept him to be a personal savior. But the words of Jesus lingered in his heart mind and soul day in and day out and just lingering in his heart mind and soul that I have to be born again. And thank you for the consciousness. And that's what we call as the Holy Spirit. And thank you for the Holy Spirit who will never ever give up on us uh, with strife with Nicodemus. And uh, at last, uh, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, leaving his last breath, his words was lingering in Nicodemus. He came forward. And later, events in his life, he testified uh, to his new birth experience. Uh, and that's what we find in John chapter 19, verse 39 to 40. And Nicodemus, uh, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes uh, and about a hundred pounds. Uh, then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen uh, with a spice uh, as the custom of the Jews to bury Jesus Christ. At last, he was unable to shun the spirit. The spirit was the winner in the life of this religious lost Nicodemus. Spirit in his heart, he was unable to curtail. His aim was the kingdom of God. And he obeyed Jesus Christ. And he said, yes, Lord, publicly, I'm going to acknowledge you are 
I'm going to be my personal savior. And he could experience the born again experience uh, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. I want to challenge you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, as the Spirit is training uh, in your life and my life today. Do not harden your hearts. Today is the day of salvation. We might be religious and be lost. But God is giving us another opportunity that we could repent, recant, and be a part of his kingdom. Not waiting for the kingdom when Jesus comes the second time. The kingdom where we could be able to live and live a transformed life. Because the Bible says, you are the light of the world. You could be religious and be born again. And that makes the difference. And if that has to make a difference, the spirit of the Lord has to indwell in each one of our hearts just the way how it was indwelled with Nicodemus. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the fourth week of the month, the fourth week of the month, we always talk about go ye therefore. Sister Amuda was talking about, we have to emphasize on personal evangelism until unless you and I are not born again. Until unless you feel that I'm so satisfied with the way all that I'm living. Until unless you feel that I am doing a good work on this life, I'm courteous, I'm happy the way how I'm going through, I'm reading my Bible. Uh, let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you might be religious. But God is calling you and me and retaliating for the same religious people like you and me that much more than this, I want you to be born again. Which means he's saying that I want you to invite me to be a part of you so that people will not see you, people will recognize me in you. That's the born again experience. If you and I could be able to and then we can make an impact to the world around me. Then the personal evangelism will be a fruitful one. And then the Lord will be able to multiply our church. And then the Lord will be able to take control of our life. And he says that this is not your work, this is my work. Nicodemus thought the rituals that he was following is my honor to God. No, God says, I don't want your honor to God. I want you to honor me the way how I wanted to be honored, he says. He wants you and me to not just be a religious person, not mere a Christian, but a cross bearer. The real enthusiast is where you and I could be able to follow. And if you and I could be able to follow Jesus the way how he wanted us to, you can change the whole world. You take the disciples. He, the disciples were 12 enough. They were absolutely very poor. They, were, they, they, they didn't have anything in their hand. But they had Jesus. We might have everything. But not have Jesus. You have lost everything. But the disciples had nothing. But they had Jesus. They won everything. And that's the reason they could make an impact on this world. Do you want to make an impact? Do you want to draw closer uh, with Jesus? Do you want many people to come to Jesus? Do you want to take people into heaven with you? Apply this principle. Be born again. Accepting Jesus to be a personal savior. We can make this world a better place to live. We can make our lives a better lives that people will be able to see us. And recognize not Jeffrey, not Mary, not Abuda, not Christian, not Ireland, not anyone will be able to say, yes, I could see something different in him. And that I could see Jesus in his life. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are we religious but lost? Or are we be able to say, yes, Lord, I am lost. It is not known my will. Let time will be done. I want you to be a part of me. Help me so that I might be able to rejuvenate my spiritual life. I want to be alive. I don't want to be an existing person. I want to live life for you. So that my life might bring fruits. Fruits that might be able to 
yield. A lot of fruits where Jesus could be able to say and say, well done my faithful servant. As we get into every fourth week, reminiscing the principle what the Lord has been told to his disciples, go in therefore and teach our nation until unless we have been born again, uh, our work on this earth will absolutely fail in every angle. But in turn, just like Nicodemus, he to the spirit and be able to give his complete life to Jesus, accepting Jesus to be his personal savior, and allow the spirit to work in his heart to be a born again Christian, just like openly acknowledge the body of Jesus Christ and graciously been able to give. And you could see that his name has been recorded in the book of the Bible. And today we talk about Nicodemus. Do you want your name to be written in the book of life? Amen. Let us follow the footsteps of Nicodemus to be born again. Let us not be religious, but let us be spiritual. Let us not be outwardly, let us be inwardly. Let us not do our work the way how we want to, but allow the spirit to work in our heart. And we could be a source of inspiration to many. May God bless you as you contemplate on this verse. And may he richly guide us through his spirit in his last days, so that we could be soul winners for Christ. <coughs> Our winners for Christ where? When Jesus comes the second time, we all not only with the families that with every individual we are one for Jesus Christ and go home with him to live with him forever and ever. And that's my prayer for you this morning. God bless you. Amen. 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 In closing, let's all join and sing this beautiful song called As God Will Take Care of You.
gracious God in heaven. We have listened to your word so far then. We might be religiously lost. Just like Nicodemus came to Jesus, we come to your throne of grace. We need the imbibing of your Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. So that we could be genuinely born again. To make an impact in the place that we work. The family that we live. And wherever we might be able to go to. Because we know the time is absolutely near that you're coming. Give us an opportunity to garner the seeds. So that, oh Father, we could sow the seed of righteousness. Because we don't want anyone to perish. That is the dream of Jesus Christ. He came himself to this world. So that no one could perish but have eternal life. May that mission and vision be carried in each one of our lives. Day in and day out. May the Spirit of the Lord be able to guide us through in the paths of righteousness. So that the Father in these last days, we could be an instrument used by the righteous right hand of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for Hope Side Church and every individual will bow down before your throne of grace. Give us an opportunity to taste and see that the Lord is good is sweeter than honey. And serve your Father, may your name be glorified and magnified. As you give us another week, oh Father, may this week be a fruitful week. Winning souls for your kingdom. Making an impact on individuals life who come in our life. And if it is thine will, may we come with a story of what the Lord has been able to do in our lives. Next week, in this hall of worship, to testify about your love. And if it is thine will, may we all enjoy your blessings every day in and day out. And may your name be glorified and magnified. Thank you for being with us and answering our prayer. Till we meet again. May your presence go with each one of our hearts. I ask this few verses in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who taught us to pray. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of your Father, and the sweet fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, may abide with each one of our lives for now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you all for being a part of our service today. I hope and pray that each one of us who are seated here have been blessed. And once again, thank you for all the visitors who have paid a visit to us and you know, joined our service today. I hope you all had a good time. And in case you are looking for a Bible study or for someone to pray with, please reach out to us and we'll be very happy to oblige. And please remember that you, if you need anything, we have a hope side contact information, so please do reach out. Thank you. Amen. Thank you once again for being a part of Hopeside Church, and I uh, hope we all have been blessed by God's word, and uh, continue to uphold us in your prayer as we do pray for all of you too. And we are here to serve to the best of our ability. Anything that we can do, we are always willing to serve. Thank you once again for joining. Hope to see you next week. Maranatha, Jesus is coming again.